What's good people and welcome back to Ask Dr. Rain. I am your host, Dr. Rain, AKA the hip hop doctor. And you know how we do it. We keep it real. We keep it 100% African, real African stories around healthcare within Africa. And I know we've been talking a lot and a lot about breastfeeding and we've done so many things. Today, we want to talk to you guys about maxillofacial surgery. Maxillo what? Maxillofacial. Maxillofacial okay the maxilla is basically your jaw and your your facial features and that is what we're going to talk to you guys about i am going to see one of the pioneers of maxillofacial surgery in kenya his name is dr matthew akama he is a certified and board certified maxillofacial surgeon remember please follow us on our socials on instagram at dr rain on twitter dr rain on facebook ask dr rain Make sure you drop the comments. We want to hear what you guys want to know or what you don't know about maxillofacial surgery. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Dr. Kama, thank you so much for gracing us on this wonderful, wonderful show of mine. It's called Ask Dr. Rain. Karibu sana. And let's go straight into the questions. Dr. Kama, please tell the public um, when you started this journey of maxillofacial surgery and how long you've been doing this uh, practice. I've practiced as a maxillofacial surgeon uh, for a period of uh, over 15 years years. Initially I trained uh, as a dentist at the University of Nairobi. Thereafter I joined a postgraduate program in oral and maxillofacial surgery at the same university. In fact we were the first class, we were the first group to study oral and maxillofacial surgery at the University of Nairobi. After that, I went outside and did a fellowship uh, in Europe. Okay. So and came back, I've uh, been practicing and also teaching uh, as a maxillofacial surgeon in the Department of uh, Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery at the University of Nairobi. Excellent. I'm very privileged and very humbled to be talking with one of the pioneers in, from what you've just said, one of the pioneers of maxillofacial surgery in Kenya. Um, very humble, thank you so much. Now, I think what people are asking is this long word, yeah, because us as medics, it's something so common, it rolls off the tongue so easily. What is, when we say maxillofacial surgery, what is it? And you're so easily, can be easily confused with dentist, like, is it a dentist, is it, what is it? That's, that's a good uh, question, Dr. Rain. Basically, um, maxillofacial surgery, as the word suggests, is a surgical discipline. And one, however, needs to have some kind of dental knowledge, as well as combined with the medical knowledge, to fully uh, come out as a competent uh, maxillofacial uh, surgery. Because here we, are, you know, you are dealing with the body, and you really must understand, you know, the surgical principles that pertain to handling uh, a human body, yes. just like in any surgical uh, discipline. So, in the postgraduate training, in our setup, in the Kenyan setup, it has been made integrated in a way that there is a rotation 
in the medical disciplines. Okay. So when we say maxillofacial, we are talking about one, the face, the maxilla, which is in terms of the anatomy. So we're talking about it's focused on that region, but at the same time, also you have to integrate the rest of the body because you cannot isolate just the that head alone. You have to think about the anatomy. You have to think of the pathophysiology, the rest of the integrated the body, the brain function. You have to know the nerves, the muscles, everything. Precisely. Yeah. So we, we're talking about, you know, uh, this specialty that basically deals with all such diseases in the face and mouth. Any such disease in that area falls under di this discipline of uh, maxillofacial surgery. It could be trauma. Okay. Uh, commonly here we handle trauma uh, from road traffic accidents. Okay. Patient comes in with a mashed face, the facial bones have been fractured, yeah. including the orbits. Yeah. You know, even sometimes you get part of the skull has been fractured, uh, where we are going to come in. And in this case, if the brain is involved, then we have to work in with a, 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 a neurosurgical a colleague to, to handle that. Okay. It can also involve, it also involves um, uh, um, oncology, tumors. Yeah. Tumors which affect the oral facial region also are handled uh, by this uh, specialty. So during the training, one has got to be well trained in oncological surgery as pertains uh, to the face. Absolutely, there's, there's a quite uh, common injuries, particularly you know, especially in children uh, who come in with uh, all sorts of cuts, you know, to the facial, you know, call the cranial facial region. Those ones uh, we we handle them because these are injuries again. You know, the face is one of the one of the most actually probably the most exposed part of the body, and really is what gives identity to a person. So this is an area that you really need, need to do meticulous repair so that uh, if there is scarring. There should be minimal scarring or no scarring at all when you're repairing this. So it's not just a question of going in and patching it up. Anybody yes. can actually do, you know, put in a couple of stitches and close the wound. Yes. But probably the aesthetic outcome may not be that good. And that's why then you really need to have this clinician who is highly trained in this area to come up, you know, to come up with a good uh, aesthetic outcome. Yeah. And also it just that reminds me that also in maxillofacial surgery, we basically also deal with, the, you know, facial, call it facial aesthetics, you know, improving on uh, the, the, the general, you know, the look, the look of, you know, the, the look of a person. Mm. Now, you know, we're in a competitive world that everyone wants to look good. If you're doing business, you want to look good to your clients. Yeah. So these patients uh, do come to us where, you know, we can do all manners of, uh, you know, uh, um, aesthetic procedures yeah. you know we, we may include non-invasive uh, you know procedures like doing you know uh, 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 botox injections and okay. uh, dermal fillers to the body you know to generally improve uh, somebody's uh, facial outlook yes yeah, so that that's that also also goes it goes, goes in place, goes yeah. in place. not uh, just trauma it's just trauma you could come i say doctor this nose of mine too huge uh, yes. people are complaining and you can do something absolutely, about it absolutely. well that's yes. that's beautiful now moving i like how you've mentioned that you trained and you're mentoring a lot of uh, of young surgeons we had a talk you you are mentor to many of us especially for us who are in the university of nairobi um maxillofacial surgery now in kenya compared to when you started maybe you can just give us a small brief of how far we've come and what we can achieve do people need to go to india and to the to the us or we have um very competent people to do that here in kenya we, we, that's a good question uh, dr rain we've really come a long way uh, when you know when we started training we really had a couple of you know of specialists in that specialty in fact you could count them with your with your fingers a few of them who had been trained we had one was trained in america in harvard uh, who is still training with us and uh, I mean uh, teaching at the university and we are members of uh, is a member of Saudi University and then we had the others who were trained in England uh, because th that train was not offered anywhere else actually I think it was only offered in South Africa and probably in Egypt 
those are the only centers that were offering that kind of training. Wow. So our people generally went either to Europe, mm -hmm. uh, or America, or India. We also had uh, one of the top uh, muscle facial surgeons who was trained in India. And he used to, you know, was practicing at, at, at Kenya, the National Hospital. And all those were actually the people who, are, who, who actually taught us that the guys who actually gave birth to that specialty in this in this republic and you could actually count them but as we came in now you know we that program started as I alluded earlier on we were the first you know patch and we were, we were three of us we eventually qualified in that first patch of maxillofacial surgeons and ever since we've been training more now because i joined the department it was with me training we, you know we, we may graduate three four and actually now it's become a regional center for training, we train for Zimbabwe. We are trained actually for Zimbabwe. Even as we I speak now, we have got students from Zimbabwe are with us. We trained for Tanzania. We trained for Uganda. We trained for Cameroon. We trained for Sudan. So it's really now more or less recognized as a regional center for training. That's at our university. So basically, right now, in a, in, in a local setup, now we want to have a maxillofacial surgeon at least in each county hospital and I'm almost, almost we're actually getting there mm. that in each county hospital most you're most likely to get a maxillofacial surgeon and really that's what we want that's 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 our aim and even get more so that uh, you know these services can be easily reachable by the common manager out there to yes. everybody. so that nobody has to come from Mashinani uh, you know, come all the way to Kenyatta, to the University of Nairobi, just to get uh, sorted. It just goes to show how mentorship and leaving the legacy is, is very important. It also goes to show how we need to empower and inform the public more about um, these, the, the scarcity of, of these surgeons, like maxillofacial surgeons. You know, right now in the political landscape and what is happening with Kenya and um, being forced to raise the fees, it's going to be such a challenge to be able to train so many doctors because the fees now for for postgraduate for undergraduate is really going up so even our medical and our health is really under threat and yet you, here you are selfless teaching empowering and mentoring so many maxillofacial surgeons who are who are even to to graduate so that is a beautiful thing and i think as kenya as as they push for this for this agenda making kenya a place where we can actually get uh, people from outside because we are seeing them we are seeing people like you said from Zimbabwe from from Sudan all all over all over Africa coming to Kenya to train what is it you do here and what kind of services do you offer your clients basically um, at, at this at, 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 at our office here we offer both uh, dental and maxillofacial surgical uh, procedures uh, as I told you that I initially uh, uh, my basic training was in dentistry uh, before I went into train uh, in maxillofacial surgery. So in the, in, 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 in the landmark dental and maxillofacial surgery uh, center, we offer all those, you know, that broad spectrum of services from the basic dental uh, services to specialized uh, uh, oral and maxillofacial surgical uh, procedures. The, the, the basic dental procedures are done within the office and there's two smaller uh, you know, maxillofacial procedures uh, which are done in the office, like third molar surgery, um, you know, the, 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 the potox, the dermal fillers, you know, the, that component of facial aesthetics, and, uh, you know, repairing small, you know, small you know, uh, um, cuts that can be done, which can be done under local anesthetic, uh, you know, s removing small masses which can be done under local uh, anesthetic that can be done uh, within our center. But those that require, uh, you know, hospitalization, we measure surgical procedures, which are going to be done under general and an, an, an aesthetic, yeah. then we do them uh, in the, in the, in the, the, the various uh, hospitals uh, within, uh, within town. Okay, that's, that's excellent. So basically, as an outpatient, uh, as an outpatient, you can do the minor procedures, be it aesthetic, full of masses, and then if you have extreme trauma or if you've, you've diagnosed maybe a, a, a tumor that needs a yeah, uh, major, major operation, you admit them to the hospital and then um, everything is sorted out there in a, in a good operating theater so they can have a good post-operation outcome. Well, um, I think for, the, for today, Dr. Kama, this has been, I think, a good introduction for the people. 
And as they've seen through the visual aids exactly what you do, um, you also gave me a good, uh, a good checkup. I need some work done also uh, surgically, so I thank you for that. And I hope to have you more so that we can keep educating the Kenyan public about the different things, especially the unique cases that you've done. Um, we would like to hear more from, from your patients perhaps and their stories and their success stories of how they came before they saw you to after. And we look uh, forward to doing that with you. So thank you so much for gracing us on the show. Um, we totally appreciate you. Uh, we respect whatever you're doing to, to improve healthcare in this country, to produce more maxillofacial surgeons. Keep doing it. And they lay us to, to move in front, regardless of the political mind state, let us focus as medics to just bring healthcare much, much closer to the Kenyan people. Pleasure is mine, Dr. Rain, and thank, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Ask Dr. Rain. You've heard it from the maxillofacial surgeon, Dr. Matthew Akama. So if you have any issues, any maxillofacial referrals, make sure that you book an appointment with the best in the country, Landmark Dental and Maxillofacial Surgery Center. Thank you for keeping it. Ask Dr. Rain. Make sure you follow us on the socials. Make sure you share this. Remember, we keep it African, realist stories, only talking about health and making sure you stay as healthy as possible and you stay keeping it. Ask Dr. Rain. Peace out, people.